Hey, welcome back. This is now 5.6 in determinant forms, and we need Lapidot's rule to do 8.8, .8, so that's why we're doing it. Um, skipping 8.7, it's on uh, using tables. Most people just use calculators now, so it seems a bit crazy to worry about tables, but um, if you want to, you can read it. It's interesting. Uh, anyways, uh, first we begin, uh, what, what we're doing is limits, okay? And uh, you've met some limits that were kind of uh, weird in Calc 1, and they, they were called indeterminate. Okay, so 4 and 0 over 0, or infinity over infinity. So we kind of first want to review those Calc 1 issues, or the remedies for uh, finding the limits of indeterminate forms. So the first form, 0 over 0, and you see it over there in the book. Usually you do some uh, simplification. Uh, basically, when you're dealing with a limit, um, you, you can do that because the limits don't really care what happens exactly at a particular value. They just care, care what happens as you approach that particular value. So um, the limit of x squared minus 25 all over x minus 5, um, we can factor the numerator to x minus 5 times x plus 5. And then uh, everywhere except at 5, uh, x minus 5 over x minus 5 is just 1 over 1. So you can remove that, and the limit as x goes to 5 of x plus 5 then is easy to figure out. You just substitute in 5 for x, and you get 10, right? Um, if you substituted in 5 initially, you would have seen that 5 squared minus 25 is 0 in the numerator. Uh, 5 minus 5 is 0 in the denominator. And that's what that 0 over 0 form is indicating. It's when you do your substitution, you end up with a 0 in the numerator and a 0 in the denominator. Okay, so you learn some uh, basic algebra in order to help you along. Um, the other kind of cases that were indeterminate that you dealt with were infinity over infinity. Um, so for example, and, and for doing these examples first, maybe I should note, uh, for completing examples like this, you, you kind of have to recall, uh, well, yeah, sure, I'll put it in, in this example. You have to recall that if you have a limit as x goes to infinity of something like 1 all over x cubed, or even, you know, 5 over x cubed, or 4 over x cubed, um, whenever you have that form, which now is L over infinity, so L for some number over infinity, that's always just going to go to zero. So you have something small over something huge, it goes to zero. So usually when they taught you Calc 1, depending on who taught you, um, what they would do for a problem like they show in the book over here, 3x squared minus 1 all over 2x squared plus 1 as x goes to infinity. Um, both the polynomial on the top, so the polynomial on the top is a, is a parabola. It's going to go to infinity as x goes to infinity. The thing in the bottom is also a parabola. It'll go to positive infinity as x goes to infinity. It's infinity over infinity form. So what they usually teach you is to divide top and bottom by x squared. So times 1 over x squared times 1 over x squared. And you'll end up with the limit as x goes to infinity of uh, 3. So you have to distribute this, right? you would get 3 over x squared, which is just 3, minus 1 over x squared, divided by uh, 2 minus 1 over x squared. Okay. Uh, the limit of the whole is equal to the limit of the parts, so long as those parts won't do something crazy. And for us, noting uh, this example, this part of it will go to 0, this part of it will go to 0, and you're just left with 3 over 2 as your answer. Okay. So you can evaluate these infinity or infinities. Just, just a note about doing these. I'd like everybody to be able to do them much quicker than multiplying by these you know, 1 over x squared and all that stuff. So my fix is if you have these forms, infinity over infinity or negative infinity over negative infinity, there's quick ways. So if the degrees are the same, so if you have like 5x to the fourth minus 2x cubed uh, plus 2x all over you know, 7x minus 3x to the fourth plus 1, um, all you have to do is collect 
the high degree terms from the numerator and denominator and take the limit of that. Okay, this, this process always works. And I, know, and I don't know why the book doesn't teach it this way. It's probably some weird technical thing. Like if I had my uh, eight postdocs, I, I would recognize the uh, topology or I, I don't know. Okay, so, but you could do this. Um, it's then the, the uh, you know, it's negative five thirds when you, you remove the x to the fourth, so you get uh, negative five thirds. If you look at the previous example, you know, you, you would just take the limit of this part, so that's three halves. So, so for these infinity over infinity limits, what I'm saying is that you should be able to look at them and know the answer without doing any work. Um, the limit of, uh, let's say, let's say this time the, the denominator is bigger than the numer numerator, so we have like 2x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 1 all over 5x to the 6 plus 2x cubed minus 5. Again, you just take the high degree parts in the numerator and denominator, um, form a fraction from that, so it would be 2 all over 5x to the second, and then take the limit of this. This is L over infinity, so that's just 0. Um, finally, if the numerator is greater than the denominator, so let's say 3 minus uh, x to the fifth all over 2x to the fourth plus 1. Same game. It'll still work. You just take the uh, these two terms and you have the limit as x goes to infinity of negative x to the fifth all over 2x to the fourth. It should be the limit as x goes to infinity of uh, negative uh, x all over 2 and that will go to negative infinity because it's 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 a dot, it's a line with slope negative. So as x goes to infinity, the y values are going lower and lower and lower and lower to negative infinity. Okay, always works. It's quick. I don't know why the book doesn't teach it, but there you have it. Um, all right. This unfortunately, then the book notes that this process won't work if you have like a mixture of transcendentals and. Uh, so like an e to the x over x, and what you need to do is develop some more tools. And that tool you develop is the L'Hopital's rule. Okay. So section uh, two, L'Hopital's. And this will work if you're given a form of a limit. So for example, f of x over g of x, where the form is infinity over infinity. So it'll work for any of these polynomials. If you're patient enough, you can keep taking. What you're going to end up doing is taking derivatives over and over and over. Uh, so anyways, it's forms uh, infinity over infinity. So if this thing is infinity over infinity, negative infinity over negative infinity, negative infinity over infinity, or infinity over negative infinity, or zero over zero, then you can replace this limit with the limit of the derivatives. And it's not the quotient rule, people. So you're just blindly taking the derivative of f of x and putting it there, blindly taking the derivative of g of x and putting it there. Okay, so it's not the quotient rule. And this won't work unless you have to assuming um, this this limit exists or is infinite. Okay, so this thing has to exist or is infinite. Okay. Um, you could prove it for simple cases. Um, usually the the real proof is a little more complicated, um, and, and they give you an extended mean value theorem there that you could play around with. Um, but we're, we're, I'm just going to apply it. I'm not going to bother going through the proof. If you want to see the proof, it's in the appendix. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at what they got. So um, example one, we have the limit as x goes to 0 of e to the 2x minus 1 all over x. So um, if you put 0 in for x, you'll get e to the 0, which is 1, and then 1 minus 1 is 0. Um, you put 0 in for x in the denominator, you have 0. So you have that 0 over 0 form, which is one of our forms up here on the right, um, and we can do L'Hopital's. 
Okay, uh, the derivative e to the 2x is 2e to the 2x. Derivative minus 1 is 0 all over 1. And then you just do the substitution again and see if it works. So let me simplify it a little bit. Uh, plugging in 0, I get 2e to the 0, which is 2 times 1, which is 2. And it worked. Okay. Um, that's my limit. So no big deal, right? Let's look at another got example 2. Let's make this the video quiz, by the way. No, actually, I want to I want to hold off on the video quiz. So sorry. Limit as x goes to infinity of ln of x all over x. So the natural log of x looks like this. As x goes to infinity, the y values are going to go to infinity. So the top is infinity. The bottom, as x goes to infinity, y equals x will also go to infinity. It'll just get really really big. Um, so I have infinity over infinity. So what I'm going to do is lock the tiles. That's one of our approved forms. The numerator, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. The denominator, the derivative of x is 1. Let's simplify that a little bit. I have 1 over x. And now it's L over infinity, which is always 0. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else? Oh, yeah. You could keep doing Lapatals over and over if you want. So example 3, you have a limit as x goes to negative infinity of x squared all over e to the negative x. So in the numerator, um, we have a polynomial x uh, quadratic x squared. So um, as x goes to negative infinity in this direction, the uh, function x squared is going to go to positive infinity. Okay? Um, e to the negative x, if you're plugging in negative values, like e to the negative, so, so you can think of limits in terms of sequences, right? So you have x and then e to the negative x. I want my x values to go to the negative infinity. So I'm thinking like negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000. So this is if you can't graph it, right? You just want to see kind of uh, analytically or numerically what, what is that limit going to be. So you'd have e to the negative negative 10, which is e to the 10, e to the negative negative 100 is e to the 100. These are huge numbers, right? So it's going to go off to infinity. So that denominator is also infinity. So... It's a L'Hopital form, so you're going to do um, integration or differentiation on the top. It's 2x. On the bottom, it's negative e to the negative x. Um, look, you, you got infinity over infinity again. So that 2x, as x goes to infinity, that thing is going to go to negative infinity. Okay? And then likewise, this thing, now if you put a negative in front of it down at the bottom here, put a negative there, you're just going to get negative infinity as well. Again, that's one of our forms for L'Hopital's. So I can go ahead and do L'Hopital's again. So I have 2, derivative of 2x is 2, and then negative e to the negative x times negative 1 because of the chain rule, which is giving me e to the negative x. So now, if you look at it, I have 2 all over infinity, which is L over infinity, which will give us a big 0. Okay, um, from here we have these unusual indeterminate forms. So, so there's like these other kind of uh, guys that we want to look at. There's three in particular, and I always put one of each on the test. So other indeterminates. Uh, just a warning, some things that look like indeterminates are not. Uh, so every once in a while you come across something that actually is determinate form that you should have known from Calc 1. Um, like an infinity times infinity is equal infin to infinity. Uh, for example, the limit uh, as x goes to infinity of x cubed times e to the x. Right? That x cubed part is going to infinity. This is going to infinity. And infinity times infinity is just going to give you something even bigger so that's going to go into infinity. So that's not considered indeterminate at all, even though maybe it kind of looks like it is. It's not. Um, so anyways, what are some other indeterminates that we can deal with using Lapital's? Zero times infinity. So it's kind of like you have a fight between the two terms. One's going to zero, trying to get it to zero. The other one's going to infinity, trying to push it to infinity. Which one works? Okay, which one wins, in other words? Okay, so how do I do, deal with this? Usually what you're going to do is rewrite it as a fraction. And then you'll apply L'Hopital's. Okay. okay, so let's look at example four. 
and we have the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the negative x times the square root of x. All right. The e to the negative x again, um, as x goes to infinity, you could do a little table if you're not sure what e to the negative x looks like. e to the negative x, by the way, looks like this. So as x goes to infinity, it's going to 0. But let's see that numerically, right? So I got like 10, 100, 1,000. This will be e to the negative 10, which is 1 over e to the 10. This will be e to the negative 100, which is 1 over e to the 100. So really small numbers, right? So that part of it is going to 0. And then the square root of x. Well, the square root of x, if you just put in like um, 10 and then 10 uh, squared and then 10 to the fourth, you're going to get outputs. Let's say instead of using 10, I don't want, well, okay, square root 10. This would then be 10. This would be 10 squared. Then 10 to the sixth, this would be 10 cubed. So it's getting really, really big. It's going to infinity. Okay, so it is one of these forms. So, and the, the trick is to turn the zero into basically infinity. And you do that by uh, rewriting the e to the negative x. Okay. So e to the negative x is the same as 1 over e to the x. So you can write this expression as square root of x all over e to the x. And now it's infinity over, well, as x goes to infinity, e to the x. So e to the x again looks like this. e to the x will go to infinity. So it's infinity over infinity form. And now you could apply a lot of towels, right? So taking the derivative of the numerator, that's 1 all over 2 root x. The derivative of the denominator is e to the x. Let's rewrite that again. So I have 1 all over 2 root x times e to the x. That denominator is, is basically an infinity times infinity situation, so you're, you're going to have L over an infinity, right? Because this denominator is just going to get huger and huger and huger if you, if you think about, you know, just multiplying in on the square root of x. So I already have the square root of x chart here. Imagine multiplying in by, by a 2. That's going to make all these bigger. And then if you multiply in by e to the x, it's going to be e to the 10, e to the 100 in there, it's going to make them huge. So it's just going to be uh, very big in the bottom. So infinity, and of course, that then will equal 0. Okay. Um, right. right. Let's look at another form. So that was our first form, the uh, 1 to infinity. There's other variations on this. Um, I don't know if the book notes it. Yeah, so there's 1 to infinity, 0 to the 0. I kind of group these together um, with each other, but we'll, we'll take a look at, at both versions. Um, so I'm going to put 1 to the infinity and then 0 to the 0. That's kind of grouped. And I, I know there's other ones. There's like infinity to the 0 is another form. Okay. Uh, let's take a look, though, at what they give us. So I have example 5. Oh, yeah, so how, does it, how do these work? Um, what they do is a little bit of fancy footwork. They're going to redefine this thing as a, as a take a natural log on both sides. Um, what I usually do is exponentiate instead. I think it's a little more direct, and you don't have to remember to take the exponential of both sides at the end. So what I do at first is rewrite as an exponential. So in their example 5, you see they have 1 plus 1 over x to the x. What I'm going to do is rewrite that as e to the ln of 1 plus 1 over x to the x. And then take, use a power rule, and I have e to the x ln of 1 plus 1 over x. Okay. Um, then I'm going to pass the limit into the exponent. So slide uh, limit into the exponent. Because right? it's it's you know there's going to be a limit out here, and then I'll just slide the limit up into the exponent, and uh, then usually you, you'll have to do some some L'Hopital's stuff on there to finish it off. Okay, all right. So yeah, let's look at example five, and let's do it my way as opposed to the book's way. I I like my method. I think it's better. 
Um, I wish somebody had shown this when I was a student. But you, you could use the books method if you want. That's fine. All right. So anyways, here I go. Limit as x goes to infinity of e to the ln of 1 plus 1 over x to the x. That'll be, um, let's pass the limit into the exponent. So e to the limit as x goes to infinity of x ln of 1 plus 1 over x. Um, identify the form there in the exponent. So this part is going to infinity. Um, the limit of ln of 1 plus 1 over x, uh, maybe I'll, I'll do that kind of here in the margin here. So the, the limit of uh, ln of 1 plus 1 over x, you can pass the limit inside there and think it's the ln of 1 plus the limit of 1 over x. The limit of 1 over x is just going to be 0. So it's the ln of 1, which is equal to 0. So you have infinity times 0, which was the previous form. Right? So we need to rewrite it as a fraction. So I'll do that. So I have e, uh, whoops, e to the uh, limit as x goes to infinity of ln of 1 plus 1 over x all over 1 over x, believe it or not. Right? Because now the, the form up in the top, we know that form was 0. And in the bottom, the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x, that's L over infinity. That's also 0. So you have a lopatolable form, right? So let's lopatol that. So I'll have 1 all over the guts of the ln times the derivative of the guts. The derivative of 1 over x, you know, again, maybe to the side on the top here, do a little bit of legwork. What's the derivative of 1 over x? So if y is x to negative 1, y prime is negative x to the negative 2. Right? So times uh, negative x to the negative 2. And then that will be all over the derivative of 1 over x again. So it's negative x to the negative 2. Get a nice cancellation for free. And then this will be e to the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 all over 1 plus 1 over x. The limit of the whole is equal to the limit of the parts, so long as you can evaluate those limits. So uh, limit of 1 in the top is 1. Limit of 1 in the bottom is 1. The limit of 1 over x is 0. So you get e to the limit of 1. Limit of a constant is just the constant. So you get e to the 1 at e. So what I'm doing is avoiding this, this part where they take the natural log on both sides. And at the end, then they have to go back and exponentiate it. Okay. So uh, you know you could do either method. I don't care. I like my method better. <laughs> I'll just tell you that much. All right. Uh, let's look at the, uh, the other guy that they give us, example 6. So we have the undetermined form 0, 0. That the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of sine of x to the x. Right? Again, I'm going to pull my trick. So I got e to the ln of sine of x to the x. And then you use power rule and pass the limit into the exponent. So I have limit of x ln of sine x as x goes to 0 from the right. Um, the limit of the first part is just 0 times, uh, think about what happens to sine as you go to 0 from the right. So sine um, looks like this. So as you're going in this direction, it's gonna, the, the y values are going to get smaller and smaller, like 0 0.1, 0 0.01, etc. And what you're doing then is plugging those values into the natural log. So you got 0 0.1, ln is 0 0.1, ln is 0 0.01, right? And if you think about the natural log function, what does that look like? It looks like this. So 0 0.1, maybe the y value is like right here, 0 0.01 there, and then it just keeps going farther and farther down, right? So it's going to negative infinity. Okay, okay so you got to rewrite it as a fraction. So I have... Uh, e to the limit, e to the limit of ln of sine x all over x, oh, oh sorry, over 1 over x, okay. 
And then uh, you could do La Bataille's because now it's going to be um, negative infinity all over infinity. Uh, as x goes to 0 from the right, 1 over x. You think about what 1 over x looks like. As you come in from the right, 1 over x is going to positive infinity. Okay. So you have La Bataille form. I go e to the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 1 all over sine x times cosine x, which will be cotan, all over negative x to the negative 2. All right. Rewrite it. So I have e to the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of uh, negative x squared, because 1 over x to the negative 2 is the same as x to the positive 2, and then times cotan of x. Okay. Um, cotan is, again, it's cosine over sine. So the cotan of 0 Cotan of zero is going to be, let's say it's going to negative infinity, right? Because sine of zero is zero. Whoops, so it's underlying upside down. It goes to positive infinity. Let's go to positive infinity. So I just got the same problem again. Um, so it's, a, it's another, you know, zero over, zero times infinity form. So this would be zero um, times uh, infinity. So gee willikers, I'm going to have to do some more fancy footwork. I'll have e to the limit as x goes to zero from the right of uh, negative x squared. Let's rewrite cotan as tan. And then you have zero over zero form. You could do lapitals again. So you have to do lapitals twice. You know, some of these problems are quite exhausting. So negative 2x all over the derivative of tan is secant squared x. Um, let's think about what secant squared is, right? So there's cosine, secant leeches off of cosine. So as x goes to 0, secant this time the y values will go to 1. And in the numerator it'll go to 0. So you'll have 0 over 1, which is 0. So you have e to the 0, which is 1. Okay, so that's our final answer, is one. All right, um, next indeterminate form. Uh, so we had some weird exponent things. Now we have infinity minus infinity. Um, just be aware that infinity plus infinity is not indeterminate, okay? That will just equal infinity, right? But if you have two different kinds of infinities, they're fighting each other, and again, it's indeterminate. And usually the way you do it is to find a common denominator between the two things or somehow make two things into one thing. So find a way to turn two things into one thing. Okay. I misspelled two. I should just put the number two. Two things into one thing. All right, so um, let's make example seven and our video quiz for this section. All right, so this is the third uh, question and video quiz set number five. Point seven, and this is example seven. Okay. Um, right, so I have then the limit as x goes to one from the right of one all over ln x minus one all over x minus one. Um, the first guy, as one go, x goes to 1 from the right, uh, ln of x, this is uh, the point x equals 1. If you come in from the right, the y values are going to get super small. It's like 0 0.01, 0 0.001, right, on, on the y values. So it's going to get really small. So this is going to be a uh, form L over uh, 0, which will be either positive or negative infinity. In this case, because you're plugging in positive numbers, it will be positive infinity. Okay? So this first thing is positive infinity. The second thing, um, as you come in 
to one from the right, you'll be putting in things like 1.1, 1.11, uh, 1 sorry, 1.1, 1 1.01, 1 1.001. So in the denominator, you have like 1.1 minus 1, which is 0 0.1, 1.01 1 .01 minus 1, which is 0 0.01. So what are you getting? You're getting uh, L over zero form again, where the denominators are always positive. So it's going to go to the positive infinity, but with that negative in front, it'll be minus infinity. Okay, so um, it's infinity over infinity. What we want to do is find a common denominator and go from there, right? So the first denominator needs an x minus 1, so I'll rewrite it x minus 1 all over x minus 1 times ln x. The second denominator needs an ln x, so I have the x minus 1 times ln x times ln x. Uh, rewrite it. And you get uh, x minus 1 minus ln x all over, if you distribute x ln x minus ln x. Let's figure out the form there. If you plug 1 into the numerator, you're going to get 1 minus 1 minus 0, so that's 0. And the denominator, that will be 0 minus 0, which is 0 again. So that's lapatowable. Um, so I'll go ahead and lapatow that. And I'll get uh, the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of 1 minus 1 over x, all over, i got to do a product rule, so ln x plus um, x times 1 over x, which is just 1, and then minus 1 over x again. Uh, think about this. So it's in the numerator, I got 1 minus 1, which is 0, and the denominator has 0 plus 1 minus 1, which is 0 again. Okay. 0 over 0, but we might be able to kind of just simplify the heck out of this, right? Multiply top and bottom by an x or something like that, see if it makes it look nicer before we get carried away. So if I multiply top and bottom by x, what are you going to get? You get x minus 1 in the numerator. Downstairs, x ln x plus x minus 1. Okay. So what do I get? I get 0 all over 0. 0 over 0 form. So I'm going to do Lapatel's again. Seems like I made a mistake here. But, uh, I don't know. It just feels like I made a mistake. <sighs> Anyways, uh, the numerator now is 1. The denominator, again, you need a product rule on x, ln x. That will be ln x plus 1, plus 1. Um, so you're going to end up with uh, plugging in 1. It's just get 1 over 0 plus 1 plus 1. That's 1 half. For some reason, it just doesn't feel right, but that's right. Okay, good stuff. Um, is that it? Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, so, you know, again, I always put each type on my test, so you kind of have to master each type. Um, that was the video quiz question for the day, and we'll call it quits there. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.